make sure I'm actually freaking recording this time. Everything working. Looks like it. We're gonna get freaking started. What is good, Z Nation? I just did a whole video. Click to record. Button change colors. I started it. Finished it. Went to end the recording and looked over and the button. It, it says start recording. I hate my life. Anywho. I reacted to part one of this. And so now I'm going to react to part two. Since I now have seen part one and it's not a good reaction. FML. Um. Has, has, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Think about everything I said. Make sure, okay. I couldn't find most amazing top ten. Um. Uh, but I did find this. This is a request from one of my live streams. That is this weird looking face. But it's a request from one of my live streams. If you would like to put in a request, you can put one in in the comments. You can come into one of my live streams. I'm live. Try to be live every night. Uh, kind of close to the same time. It's just whenever I finish everything and get a chance to go live. I try to at least go live for an hour or two. Uh, most time it's 8 or 9 to 10, sometimes 11 Central Standard Time. Uh, so just watch for me around those times. Uh, yeah. I don't remember everything I said before. We're just gonna go. Welcome back Top 10 Gaming fans. You love the first one so much, we made a part two. That's right, I'm your host Johnny Rogers, gamer by day, comedian by night, and from here on out, I'll be your Call of Duty commander on all that is creepy with the Top 10 Call of Duty Creepy Pastas Part 2. Creeping its way in at number 10, Death Day 2. Previously at our number 8 spot, I told you Real quick, highly recommend going and checking out part one. There was some good stuff. But the first one, I'm not going to spoil anything for y'all. Not the first. Yeah, number one. The last one they show. There's so many questions with that one. Like, it's up there on not believable. But, like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything. So, yeah. The story about a young man who receives the game Call of Duty World War II from his grandfather and begins seeing his deceased grandfather in the game. Even being able to smell the bodies at the concentration camp level within the game. Well, it gets weirder. After moving through that level, he hears his grandfather say that we're not done yet. We have to save McMaster. This time, it's Hold a. Up. This is a lot similar to number 10 on the last one. It's just almost like less details, but more. Same names. <coughs> but like, it's where this one left stuff out, this one's covering. And then where this one's leaving stuff out, this one's covering. What you doing? You being lazy, man? Best give me some real top 10 stuff. This best be something different. Ghost of his grandfather who gives him another copy of World War II. When he puts it in the system, his grandfather picks up the other controller to assist. When the Definitely not the same. Game lows, it only has one mission called Pay for Your Sins. On top of a hill underneath of a gatehouse and a bunker, they see McMaster. After sneaking by several German soldiers, they get into the gatehouse. That's when the game transformed into something sinister. It began to look like hell. Even the soldiers appeared to be turning into demons. When they finally reach McMaster, a demon is behind him holding a knife to McMaster's throat. As he slices his neck, McMaster lets out a scream. The grandfather wrestles the knife out of the demon's hands. Our player tries to help, but... He can't move, and a dying McMaster picks up the knife and stabs the demon in the back three times. In a flash, our player is suddenly in his mom's car, in front of a house he doesn't recognize. His phone buzzes and gives him a command. 
to go inside the house. There, he finds three old men sitting around a poker table. It's his grandfather, Tubbs, and McMaster. His grandfather... Same names, though. It's almost like the same story, but different. What the fuck is going on here? Looks at him and says, Thank you for helping me save him. Us three are brothers until our death day. Number nine, Blackout. This is another great creepypasta courtesy of Flipless Grip. It tells the story of a former alcoholic who believed he could change his ways by focusing on becoming a great YouTube streamer. He buys a cheap pair of headphones from Craigslist ad and well, he loads up Black Ops 4 and he just jumps right into the game. And at one point, the game glitches and keeps putting him into duos with another player he doesn't recognize. He turns off the Xbox to give the game some time to update and the next day, hoping the glitch was gone, he tries again. Except this time, he's put into a party with a gamer he also doesn't recognize. He says hello, just to be nice, and they say hello back. The two talk for a while until things get weird. The mysterious player asks, how his alcoholism is going. How could he possibly know that? Weirded out, he begins to stand and look around. Maybe there's someone outside trolling him because he has put his remaining alcohol in front of him as a test to his power to overcome that addiction. The voice then says, Sit down. Suddenly, he has no control over his body. It's as if the frequencies coming from the headphones he bought we're controlling his movement. The voice then tells him to drink it all. Surely if he does that, he'll die of alcohol poisoning. He begs for the voice to stop, but he can't control his body. He drinks and drinks. Then the voice says, now it's time for the nail in the coffin. As he drinks the last beer, he begins to lose feeling in his body. He feels as though he's fading away. And before he's about to black out, the voice just says, good night. Number eight, Soul and Destroy. This story is about another young player also named Jimmy. His brother Ben was a big time YouTuber that paid the bills by playing COD to support him and his brother. One day, Ben was streaming when he suddenly that. had a stroke at the age of 23. This was confusing to Jimmy because his brother was in good health. Searching for answers, his best friend Hunter tells him to watch the stream to see if there were any clues. He notices that right before the stream went dark, his brother got an invite to a game by someone named Soul Seeker. Jimmy stays home from school to get into contact with him and is invited to the same game his brother was in, called Soul and Destroy. When he gets an invite to the game, he begins with his friend Hunter, John and Ricky. He invites them over to play this new modded game. And when the game starts, they're sucked into the game. And then they hear, Welcome, Welcome to Soul to soul and destroy. destroy. You'll find this to be very different than any game you have ever played. Then they hear Soul Seeker outline the rules. It's four teams of four. Only one team lives, the others perish. Their goal is to reach a box in the middle of the map that contains four gems. When the players put the gems into the gauntlet on their arms, they can go home safely. Every time a player is killed, you're rewarded with a soul streak. With four kills, you have the ability to bring back a fallen teammate. When they're in the game, Jimmy sees his brother, who appears to be an NPC in the game. He calls out to him and his brother tells him that when a player dies, they become an NPC to help future participants. He also tells him some disturbing news. Team Alpha, are in the game on purpose. They enjoy killing people, and they're always protecting the gems to get home. After a few hours, there are only two teams left, the boys versus Team Alpha. They hear a member of Team Alpha say, you boys having fun yet? And then before they know it, Hunter is shot and killed by a sniper. After shooting back and forth, the boys manage to get it down to just one player, who reveals himself to be the Soul Seeker. Turns out that he was a big fan of Ben and Jimmy's channel, but when they got a sponsorship that he wanted, his love turned to jealousy and then to murderous rage. John and Ricky are knocked down to about 10% health and have no bullets left. So now it's just Jimmy versus the Soul Seeker. Jimmy manages to use a shield to deflect a grenade that he threw, but then Soul Seeker has a secret weapon up his sleeve. He pulls out a custom gun called the Soul Shot and it's one shot, one kill. As he's about to fire at Jimmy, Ben's NPC dives in front of the bullet, blocking the shot and taking him out of the game. Jimmy then quickly picks up a sniper rifle, shoots Soul Seeker as he's reloading, and then drags his fallen friends, John and Ricky, back to the box and uses his four kill soul streak to bring back his friend Hunter. When they place the gems in their arm, they're transported back to Jimmy's house. Number seven, hmm. Lucid. This is a story about a 14 year old named Alex Gray. 
In 2009, he was in a terrible car accident, the airbags didn't deploy, and his head actually hit the dash on the passenger side. Alex goes on to talk about using this opportunity for a second chance at life to pursue a career in gaming. He makes so much money in the 10th grade from sponsorship that he drops out of school. He then says, fast forward to 2018, he and his friends are some of the best gamers in the world and still play their favorite game, Modern Warfare 2, where they all met, even winning several tournaments for consecutive years together. This story takes a dark turn though when it shifts to a doctor now narrating the story, speaking to Alex's parents. He calmly says, Mr. and Mrs. Gray, Alex has been in this coma for nearly 10 years now. We hope that we could save him after the accident, but it appears his brain has been lucid dreaming, so much that it's decaying at a far more rapid pace than we thought. Legally, he has to be considered brain dead. We recommend that it's best to take him off life support. In at number six, Shadows on Shipment. This is a story that's creepy yet touching in the same sense. In 2007, our player's favorite game to play was Call of Duty, and even more so, solving arguments in one-on-one -on -one matches in Shipment. When the remastered version came out, the player and a friend drop into a one-on-one -on -one game when he notices a shadowy figure kind of swoop by. Thinking it's just a glitch, he ignores it. The next day, he decides to drop into a private match of Shipment and just have a look around. He notices that a shadow figure again and follows it this time. The shadow stops outside of the map and, and just stays there, almost pleading with him to follow. Although he's stuck within the confines of the map, he's still interested. And now in the present day, he's a pretty decent coder, so he decides to crack the mystery of this shadowy figure by opening up the character section in the code. And underneath the usual characters, he notices something different. There's one that just says, the mechanic. Curious about this, he tracks down a retired coder from the original game. He tells him that the mechanic was based off of an army soldier who helped the developers add an element of realism to the game. However, his specialty was car bombs. And in 2007, with a war on terrorism in the midst and IEDs being a giant topic of discussion, the developers didn't want to add it in. The mechanic was then enlisted in the army and was killed in the line of duty. The coder said that as a nod to him, they created the character known as Ghost in his honor of his work with the original game. Somehow though, the file got back into the remastered game. And when our player starts back up shipment, he goes to the garage and sees holes that shape out to be a, a face of some sorts, and then sees a shadow next to the car. The player would like to believe that this could be an Easter egg or perhaps a fallen soldier who maybe found his way back into the original game. Number five, I sold my soul. This tragic tale is about a gamer who was obsessed with Call of Duty. He yearned to be the best, and after him and his team lost a game to a seemingly weaker team, he sent the team leader, known as Skillsmate, a classic GG. To his surprise, the leader messaged back saying, no amount of skill or money into things like FPS freaks or Astros could beat me. Add Archfiend and learn the truth. Now, filled with curiosity, he messaged Archfiend who said, if you want to be the best and never defeat it again, all you have to do is sell your soul to me. Jokingly, he replied, okay. I'll sell my soul to you. As soon as his team was back, they began skyrocketing through the ranks, with our player leading the scoreboard every single time. He believed it was his skill and determination until he got a message from Archfiend that said, do you like your newfound skills? The next tournament they were in, Skillsmate's team led. When he checked the stats, Skillsmate wasn't listed. And then when he messaged the team, they had never even heard of the gamer tag. Then, as he began his next match, he hears a strange voice through his headphones that says, Run! The voice absolutely rattles him, and they lose the game. They lose again, and again. He can't Hold believe up. it. It <clears throat> rattles him, and they lose the game. They Get out. Wait, do they have that linked? They do not. That's a what? 10.07? Alright, now let's see what we can do. The voice absolutely rattles him, and they lose the game. They lose again, and again. He can't believe it. He turns his PS4 off and sees his family. He runs downstairs to try to tell his dad like what happened, but his father turns to him and says, 
Who the hell are you? Get out of my house before I call the cops. He looks at his mother and sister and they look terrified. So he calls his girlfriend and his own girlfriend doesn't know him. He hits up his old teammates and they say they only play in teams of three. So he turns back on his PS4 and the only friend left was Archfiend. There was a message from him that read, you sold me your soul so you could win. So everyone would know you. When you lost, you became mine and no one will ever know you again. Number four, Black Hell Ops. Oh, shit. This spooky creepypasta is another one from Flipless Script's greatest hits. It's about a bootleg copy of the first Black Ops release. Our player was excited when he heard about Black Ops being set for release and he wanted to get his hands on a bootleg copy. So he puts out several requests and gets an email from someone named Bootleg Bill. When he buys the disc from him though, Bill doesn't want any money. He just wants him to take the game. He feels so bad, he just leaves him with $80 and heads home. To his surprise, the disc had the letters C-O-D-B-H-O. -O. He wondered what the H could mean. The player ignores it, though, and just moves on to play his favorite game of zombies. But something is off. He noticed a map that he's never heard of called Ad, which in Russian means hell. When he starts the zombies, they look different. They appear to be Russian soldiers with horns coming out of their head. And everywhere he looked, he saw hands coming out of the ground. At one point, the hands actually pull his character through the ground and he begins free falling in complete darkness. The player ends up in a map that appears to look like Hiroshima, except looking like it did that fateful day on August 6, 1945 when the Americans dropped an atomic bomb. He saw bodies everywhere. This sickens him so much he emails Bootlegville demanding why the game would be so crude in its realism. With no reply, he continues in a game and reaches a sign that says, Dono yo ni sore wa jaku di zaku dearu kogaga kanji rara masuka. Which translates to, how does it feel to be in hell, Zach? After four days, he gets a reply from Bootleg Bill that said, Bill is not here right now. Don't even think about returning the game if that's what you're thinking of doing. I took care of Bootleg Bill. When he returns back to the game, he hears a Japanese choir singing this. Where, where, wa shende airu sake shi ante ma desu. He hears this over and over again, and it translates to, we are dead, but you are too. Number three, nostalgia. This creepypasta is about a troubled young man and his journaling that a counselor told him to do. The journal starts bitter about the future of Call of Duty and how the new additions to the game such as jetpacks are ruining his view of what COD used to be. With the release of World War II on the rise and he felt happy. Um. <clears throat> so that link that was left. I just searched that and that video got removed to add a little extra creepy to that. I'm all back out of that. Yeah. So, uh. Maybe my last recording did start and it just stopped from this stuff. Anywho. His view of what COD used to be. With the release of World War II on the rise, and he felt happy that he could finally achieve this nostalgia. Aside from his counselor, he had no one left. His parents had died, and people swear that he had gone insane because he lived for Call of Duty. His counselor then suggests that with his mental state, he should seek out healthy relationships with actual living people. He journals that no one knows him better than Call of Duty, and that it's always been there for him. The player even has panic attacks when the game doesn't load up. When the big day comes and World War II is released, he writes, Dear Call of Duty, you made me lose all hope in life. You knew you were all I had. Way to keep the game historically accurate. Good job on adding people into the game that would have never been there in World War II. I also love the fact that COD points are going to be returning. Now kids with their parents' credit card can just buy better guns so that they can beat me. He continues to say that Call of Duty is a thing of the past just like his will to live. The player then enters one last journal entry. There's only one way to end the pain. This is my last entry into my journal. Maybe somebody someday will find this. Maybe you'll, one day you'll hear my voice and my final act as a person. 
Number two, addicted. This creepypasta involves a gamer and his 12 year old neighbor who was addicted to playing Call of Duty. He lived in an apartment complex next to the boy and his family and the kid's parents were horrible to him and one night the player heard screaming from his neighbor's apartment. Him and several neighbors rushed over to just find the boy was playing Call of Duty and screaming at the game. But for another two weeks the screaming would continue randomly in the night. One day when he was looking out his window he finally sees the boy outside and it looks like he's leaving for school but as soon as his parents leave. He rushes back inside to play more Call of Duty. That night he hears screams again, except this time it's coming from the father. He had enough of the boy's addiction to his Xbox and decided to smash it outside of the apartment building. Then. The player hears footsteps coming from inside of his apartment. He sees what looks like the shadow of a small boy but then it disappears. He can't believe that this boy is so addicted to the game that he would sneak into his apartment to play it. The weird thing is, there's only one entrance and it was locked. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, he sees his bedroom door shut. He slowly opens it to find no one inside and Call of Duty was on the screen. Then the lights flicker and he hears a woman's voice say, it's time to go. When the room goes dark he runs out of his apartment to find police outside. They have two body bags and the boy's father was being arrested. The next day on the news oh, he hears shit. them say, a boy in Colorado tried to commit suicide for an unknown reason and was killed by his father in the process. The mother saw what her husband had done and called the police. Then the father shot her as well. Ten months later, the player is in a new apartment, but every now and then, he'll hear the kid's voice and an Xbox turn on. Number one, reveal the dead. This creepypasta is a different take on the gift of sight as seen on Flipless Scripts channel. It involves a Call of Duty zombies and a creepy ritual. It's a ritual that reveals certain aspects of our reality that our brain can blind us to. First, you'll need to load up zombies menu screen at 11:59 p.m. It can be any zombies on any Call of Duty, but just make sure every door and window in your home is closed. Make sure that your screen is displaying the zombie menu is in the center of the room. Now plug in your headphones, sit in front and close your eyes. For this to work you must be alone. All of the devices must be off so there's no distraction from the ritual. Do not get up. Do not open your eyes. Now imagine yourself walking through a cemetery. Allow your brain to run with the images it creates. Do not fight it. Now imagine you're watching yourself in your current state. In your mind, walk up and place your hand on your shoulder. If you feel a cold chill down your spine or your neck hair standing up, it means you're almost there. You must continue to have your eyes closed. Now say, I want my eyes to be open 10 times. After the 10th time, open your eyes and begin playing solo zombies. Survive for as long as you can. If you can make it past the fifth round and you have remained true to every step in this ritual, you will now be able to see and feel the undead. This is both a blessing and a curse though because not only can you see them, but they can see you. Do not allow your fears to take over. They feed off of your fear and their hunger is never satisfied. And that has been the top 10 Call of Duty Creepypastas part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, click the playlist on I'm the good. screen if you want more videos I don't like need this. To see and feel As them. always, to stay up to date with our newest videos, you gotta hit the subscribe button. Plus, let me know down in the comments which Creepypasta freaked you out the most. From Top 10 Gaming, I'm Johnny Rogers. Until next time. Um, which one freaked me out the most? Maybe the one that you left the link for and the video had been removed? I mean, just, just, just a little. Of course, that is three years old. So, yeah, nah. I ain't a fan. <laughs> um, back over here. Okay. Yeah, let me know which one y'all. Stupid net. Let me know which one y'all like the most in the, or dislike the most in the comments. And, uh. I'm gonna go use the bathroom real quick. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Deuces.